Hello, welcome to 8.9 News. I'm Finlo Castain. An historic collection of more than 10,000 dried and pressed plant specimens, which dates back more than 200 years, is to be digitised and used to create a time capsule record of biodiversity in the UK. Royal Agricultural University Associate Professor Dr Kelly Hemmings is leading the digitisation. I asked her to tell me more about the project. So our project is the Herbarium Digitisation. This is a collection of historic mainly 19th century dried and pressed plants along with associated location and date information and it's very historic collected predominantly by former professors of natural history at the Royal Agricultural University among others. And this is a process of digitization why is that digitization important? This is important because the specimens being so old are delicate. I wouldn't say they're fragile, but they are delicate and they can't withstand much handling. So for anybody to use these, seeing them in photographic format in high resolution is far more beneficial for the specimens, but also in terms of allowing people to use this collection, because you know being placed in the drawers here is not accessible to very many people. If digitised and online, which we will be doing in due course, this may take two or more years to, to fully complete, um, it will be available to people worldwide to have a look at. As well as being able to look at the records, people will also be able to compare them more easily. So what are the main comparative data points that you're recording during the digitization process? The specimens themselves can be compared to live plants in the current day. The information that comes with each specimen is particularly important. The location data will enable us to see whether those particular species are still indeed present in those locations today. Sometimes the detail goes down to an individual field, it's that that detailed. Um, The information also tells us the date that the specimen was collected which is very precise, enabling us to see if that particular plant was in flower or seed on that particular date. That can be compared to modern day flowering times. For example, some species people are recognising are coming into flower earlier because it's warmer. So how does that actually compare to these historic specimens? And what sort of things do you expect to be able to learn from the digital record? And how might this help people to address today's environmental challenges? The metadata that I described is key here. Um, Knowing about the flowering or seed times of those particular plants, which we call the phenology of the plants, um, enables us to compare to today's data. For example, are certain species coming into flower earlier because it's warmer? Were they in flower later back in the 19th century, which we can prove with the specimens? Likewise, the location data is really important. If that species is no longer in that location, well, why not? Is that location maybe a candidate for reintroduction? Um, From some of the work I've done, um, looking at ancient woodland indicator plant species, about two thirds of the specimens um, that I've looked at actually were still recorded today in current biological records. So it's not necessarily all a, a sad story. Where have the specimens actually come from geographically? The vast majority of the collection uh, are UK wild plants. Um, A tiny fraction I've seen um, from Uganda, Zimbabwe. I found one from Madeira the other day, Um, but I would say 98% of this collection are are UK wild flora. In in that, it's a little unusual. If we look at the major organisations with the um, specimens they have digitised so far, most of those are international. So having a, a repository of UK specimens and a particular concentration around the Gloucestershire area, because many of the specimens were collected by Samuel P. Woodward, who was professor of botany here at the RAU. So he has obviously spent some time collecting in the locality. So there's a little concentration in Gloucestershire, but UK overall. Has there been interest from other natural history organisations? Because this record must be important in terms of building up a a broader body of knowledge. Yeah, that's right. So we have um, support from the Natural History Museum um, in terms of benefiting from their expertise, having digitised their own collection. So we're working with them. We've also partnered with Gloucestershire Naturalist Society, who funded the project and also funded a postgraduate research student to undertake a lot of the the linked research here. So we have a number of organisations already interested and um, several more have contacted me 
as well. Do you have any sense of how the record might have been used in the past and why it was collated in the first place? Yeah, that's an interesting one. There, there are two elements to this, this herbarium. Um, this behind me here is the old herbarium. It's predominantly 19th century. Some of them creep into the 1920s. Um, that, I think, was collected as a scientific endeavour. It's a very rigorous scientific collection, perhaps used for teaching as well, I would imagine. On this side, we have what's called the new herbarium. It's a much smaller proportion of the samples, and it seems to have been collected in the middle of last century. That seems to me to be, it's a scientific collection, but very much a teaching collection. It seems to focus around those plants of arable land, grassland, some of the plants that people might think of, of ar arable weeds, for example, or arable wild flowers, we may also call those. So I think that was predominantly put together for the students for their benefit. That was Dr. Kelly Hemmings from the Royal Agricultural University. More news on our website, 8.9.com. That's all for now. We're back soon. Thanks for watching.